industrial side, you know, it's a little edgy. So we're discussing more about the plans of this house. Now we need to address the exterior. Now previously we showed in block form and that was just a rudimentary form of making up this house. Now that is not actually where we started off, but I thought it'd be a good introduction and show you kind of where we're going with this house. Now I always start with a floor plan. I want function over form. So what we knew is we were gonna have two bedrooms, we only need one bath, and we're gonna need a couple of closets, we're gonna need a linen closet, so we're gonna put that in the bathroom. When you have a house that you have varied seasons on, you might have like ski equipment. You don't need that in the summertime, but you also don't need to have extra comforters during the summertime, so you need to have a place to store those. So you have a blanket closet, utility room, also full food storage if you needed it, you want to have lots of room. We could have that as a supplemental third bedroom, but it doesn't have a closet. But it does have a crawl space underneath for tons of storage. Now the crawl space is a conditioned space, that means it's clean. It's also heated and it also has airflow just like the rest of the house. So there's no stale air through there. And it also, it's a conditioned crawl space, means that it's a buffer between that frigid ground and warm floors. So your feet are walking on warm floors and it warms up really quick instead of going with something like a radiant floor heated on a slab. That would take days to warm up. So that's why we went with a crawl space that's conditioned. I have not done a vented crawl space since 2007. We don't do them anymore. More on that subject later. So right now, let's get to the exterior. We live in an area where there are lots of old mine and shacks. They've been here for a hundred years and they look wonderful. I love the personality of them and I wanted modern and just a position of old and new. So I wanted modern in an old looking house. So the materials readily available locally. So the outside of this house comes from a sawmill that is only three miles away. Now that might get you some lead points, but it's right down the road. Let me show you that. So this right here is how the exterior of the house is going to look. We call it a board and batten. It's a board and bat system. So this is going to be the exterior siding. There is no stain. There is no paint. We don't have rock here because really the humidity levels aren't that high. But this is going to be the majority of the walls. Now I'm going to add something for moisture protection. Now this actually came from one of those hundred year old mines. Now this is just rusty corrugated steel probably from the roof of one of these shacks. Now, I love this stuff. I love the color of rust. I collect rusty old tools. Anyway, that's my own deal. And these old miner shacks and buildings have had metal roof on them that rusted. They're 100 years old, they're still standing, they look great, and I wanna fit in with that. Now, on the brief, I want to make this look like a miner 100 years ago, what he would build, if he could, if he was into modern architecture. So that's kind of a little spin on that, and that's just what is giving this house a little bit of personality. So the wainscoting, so the very first three feet where the snow's going to blow up against the house, it's going to be this rusty steel. Now, you're going to see it, it's going to be brand new rusty steel, but I'm going to show you how to rust it also. So this, we've got rust, we've got board and back, very traditional, but in a context that is not very traditional. Hold on. Now, also, you know, I don't want to paint on this. I don't want any exterior paint that I have to worry about. No chipping or, I'm not going to paint when I come up here. So, this right here is a weird material and it's brand new in the roofing industry. It's called textured paint. Now, the textured is one of the things I wanted very specifically for this because this is new to the industry in the last year or so and I just had to have it because for one it doesn't make it look like a brand new shiny roof. I want it to look like this house has been there for a long time. So you got something to say Rowdy? <coughs> Rowdy, you want to speak? <coughs> you want to speak?
The trim of the house is gonna be covered, so I do not have to paint the overhangs. Now, under the overhangs is gonna be this, I guess Rowdy's talking to somebody out there. We're gonna have rusty steel wainscoting and underneath the overhangs. So this is textured, this is gonna be on the fascia, and it's gonna be protected, it's good for 35 years without any color fade, and it's metal, it's gonna last for 50 plus years, and the metal roof, the standing seam metal roof, matches it entirely, so does the drip edge, and I've got a couple other little twists that you're gonna see as we build this house. Last thing on the exterior materials is this. That right there is cold rolled steel. All of the beams are gonna have big old chunky hardware and I've gotta weld it up. So this is what it's gonna be like and weld it up. If it rusts, it rusts, I don't care. This is part of the personality and the age of the house. So this is an attendant house. So all of this hardware is gonna be held together with big old chunky bolts. So while you're watching this video and you think that we're being interrupted and you have these little things that suggest you to go to a different video, you can go ahead and click on that card is what they call that and you can click on that and that won't take you from the video you're watching right now. It sets it up that you can watch it afterwards. It also gives you opportunities to watch all the other videos that might be available that have some association with this video. So now we're gonna address what we're gonna build this house out of. You've eliminated almost everything. We are not gonna stick build this house. You don't like shipping containers for cold. We're gonna make it out of the best insulation that you can get, the insulation that doesn't burn, and that is part of my solution for a sustainable house that I don't have to worry about while I'm gone in the mountains. When I'm here, I want it to be warm, and this is the best insulation you can get. It's polyurethane closed cell foam, and it's injected into so this is gonna be a SIPS house. Structurally insulated panels. Look it up, structurally insulated panels. They actually have, it's a sandwich of injected polyurethane foam. If you're familiar with Gorilla Glue, which is a phenomenal glue, this is glue all the way through. There is no delamination on this. So these are Huber panels right here. It's 7 16 it's an OSB product, and it is good for the, guaranteed for the life of the house not to delaminate, just like the floors are. This is the best insulation we can get today. So we'll put these up pretty quick and this house is gonna be warm. The entire house is made out of that. Now the whole thing is one unit, not a bunch of little units that can twist. This does not move. The independent laboratory testing has shown that these SIPS panels, they're 30% stronger than traditional stick built houses. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's exactly what I was thinking when I first heard it. It can't be. But the science, if you believe in science, the science isn't wrong. These are phenomenal performers and they're warm. The other thing is they're easy to address and put up. I totally suggest you look into SIPs. I think I can make you a believer in the performance of great insulation of being able to put together a house very quickly and you can design it to whatever you want it to look like. It doesn't have to be a rectangle or a boring box. You can make it anything, any style you want. These are great. All right, look forward to it. Look forward to your questions. And thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining the team. All right, thanks everybody. Put your comments. Thank you, put the like. I hate to say this, but those likes, man, they really do something to YouTube. And thank you for everybody that subscribed. See you next time. On every build, it's important to come in on time and on budget. Your bank account will appreciate it and time will reward you. The way to do that is to make a plan, make a good plan, stick to that plan and don't change that plan and don't waffle. So there they are. The modern cabin plans are now done.
they've been approved. We've got our permits. We've contracted with contractors for the excavation, for the water well, and the septic system. And I can't wait to start getting dirty. When you're building a house, you never really know how much it's going to cost you until you get out of the ground. You'll never know what the surprises are that you're going to find once you start moving dirt. Now, we've also got the SIPS manufacturer. They have the plans. We are working out fine details. As soon as those are signed off, they will start manufacturing those, and we will start scheduling for a time when we can assemble and put up the house. We've got a lot of concrete work to get done, but I can't wait. I can't wait to start building this house and start seeing some results from all the plans. Let's go build a modern cabin. We're done. There you go. Thank you very much. So now go build it. Better. Go ahead and click on that subscribe, like, and share, and that little bell, and that little bell, and that little bell. It'll keep you up to date with the series and the latest videos. Now go build it better. I don't know what Rowdy's barking at, but I don't know. Hope he's not eating somebody. Rowdy!